Let's try a different one. How about a form ride car? That's for Deno's rod form. Wait, wait, wait. I used new Deno's picture on a Deno rod form card? And I'll just pull that out because it's a generic noise. But yeah, it, it just spouts off all the beginning sound clips. There's no point to that. There's no way it could be used in the show. How did they ever get popular? There's no way they would be released normally. They're leftovers from the testing process. Oh my god, I'm just making crap up now. No, this, no, no, this is, this is wrong. This can't go on. Gotta fix this. Ride bucket! Get the sea cucumber ready. We've got work to do. My review of the original Deca Driver was my first Common Rider review ever, and one of my most viewed videos, which is why it pains me so much that I made so many bad guesses and errors. I always wanted to go back and redo the video, but... Yeah, it turns out when you leave a card in it for three years straight, the scanner switch breaks. Luckily, I now have a, admittedly expensive, second chance. So we're going to look at the Deca Driver's new Complete Selection Modification version. For those who never saw Complete Selection toys before, a quick primer. It's Bandai's line of high-end Kamen Rider roleplay toys aimed at collectors. They used to be brand new molds made at adult prop replica size with screen accurate longer straps, die cast parts, more accurate paint, and higher quality electronics. The modification subseries has all of those upgrades, but rather than being a new mold, the existing DX toy is modified to bring it up to complete selection standards. This isn't a bad thing, as most CSM toys are for newer riders, it allows your old collectibles to still work in the upgraded belt. We start with the box, because it is noteworthy. For starters, fairly big, so expect heavy price tag to import this out of Japan. The packaging is also collector oriented. Multiple layers of cardboard with very stylish photos printed on, and a clever display for the Deca driver and cards within the box. You'll also find a styrofoam tray rather than Bandai's usual cardboard for better protection. The paperwork is pretty standard, instructions, legal jargon, but there is this interesting blue sheet included. Luckily, despite this piece of evidence, nothing from the box has been stolen. We'll start with the changes to the overall belt. First off, the center ring around the lens is now made of metal, which pops a lot more than the silver paint from the original. Inside the lens, there's a glittered sticker going all the way around to help catch the LED's light during the card scans. The silver paint around the belt and on the handles is now a darker shade, with a lot more metallic glitter to it. At the top, you'll find the decade name now molded in rather than printed on, so no shortcuts taken here. Other changes include the buttons on the side handles, which are now screen accurate white. I think the biggest show of detail level comes in the Rider logos around the lens. They're a tiny bit smaller than the original, but what stands out is how much better the printing is, with full detail shown rather than the original that muddled them. The Kabuto and Deno logos in particular are much clearer. The back retains the circular barcode molding that Decade is known for, but the more important observation is the change to the belt connections. The driver's been upgraded to a modern style strap that can be disconnected on both sides, making storage, display, and removal easier. Speaking of, the new belt strap is screen accurate and made of a soft metallic silver plastic, and inside it's attached to a nylon strap that can adjust to an adult waistline. Theoretically. It maxes out around 37 inches. To hide the clip, the belt loop is still included, but now attaches with a much friendlier loop of Velcro. To this end, I wish the inner strap matched the plastic better, but it's still a huge step up from the DX toy. For the record, the holster clip from the ride booker doesn't fit on the new strap, so you'll have to find some other way to carry your cards around. There's one other physical change to this belt, but we'll get to that shortly. So that's the changes to the toy. What about the cards? I'm happy to report they're finally screen accurate. 
Romanized names, no Gomberite game stats or descriptions in Japanese, they look spot on to the ones in the show. They're also plastic cards as opposed to the cardboard of the original, which is nice to see as the cards go through a lot. This should help hold up better. Though they do feel weird, they bend a little easier than the originals do. I'll be showing all 30 cards included as I demonstrate them. Which I should get to, shouldn't I? First off, for those new to the belt, pulling the handles on the side causes it to open up and turn the card slot from the side to the top. This also reveals a lot of extra techie molding inside. From here, the buckle can still be removed by holding down the button on top and prying it off, which still feels harder than it should be, but at least the button no longer sticks up from the top of the driver now. And yes, the K-Touch still fits. On the back, two compartments for a AAA battery each, making it a more eco-friendly belt than more recent ones. Batteries in and replaced on the base, let's turn it on. You'll hear that sound a lot. Noises play with everything, including the handles. I still love how everything moves in different directions for the action feature, and it just feels good to play with. So no more stalling. Let's start with the classic. Henshin! Two red LEDs illuminate the card to create the red lens effect from Decade's costume and go out on their own shortly after. Still love the Henshin sound, very high tech. The Henshin noises are the same from the original belt. They're the traditional sound effects but somewhat abbreviated to match Decade's fast form changing. The belt also comes with the nine Final Form ride cards from the show. There's no unique noise to them outside of the echo they cause to the riders' names, but we'll give a listen anyway. Final Form Lido. There's also a lone final attack riot card, but it is the most important one. Then there's the special cards. For starters, there's a 10th final form ride card that the original Decca driver didn't have a sound for. The rest of the cards are all an assortment of attack rides, starting with Decade's own selection of attacks. 
in the original belt, these ended up producing generic sounds. This is complete selection. Things have changed. Now we're getting into how expanded this belt is. Let's keep going. Sounds good, but maybe a bit off? Here, this one's more noticeable. The voice actor for the belt, Mark Okata, was brought in to record new dialogue for the belt. Though why they recorded new audio for the sounds they already had from the show and games, I'm not sure. It's a knock against the accuracy of the belt, unfortunately, but better there than not at all. And I applaud the extra effort because it pays off in many ways. For instance, let's hear the attack rides the belt includes from other riders. Gekibo Reika might be the biggest loss from the re-recorded audio. Lastly, the belt includes a brand new function. That button on the bottom activates a pair of music clips from the show. The first is Decade, otherwise known as the epic speech music. The second is the battle theme, Parallel World. Great addition, but it gets better. The music is on a second audio channel, so it keeps playing even if you trigger another sound effect. And then it goes from better to glorious. Hold the button down for a couple seconds and you get an added feature. And for proper effect, let's hear the henshin again. This is one of the most intuitive gimmicks I've seen in a belt. It changes to the battle music regardless of the card, so any rider can get that effect, and it's such a satisfying thing for the belt to do. That's what you get out of the box. All the must-have cards, a great music feature, amazing new deco, and just enough new audio to make you hungry for the rest. I could end there, but for the cost, I think I need to leave you with an idea of how robust this toy really is. To that end, I've got some printer friendly but still nice looking fake cards. And yes, they are correct this time. First off, every attack ride has the right noise, even the obscure ones. All of the form rides seen in the show are in the belt. Even ones Decade didn't use are here to fill the gaps. Wing. 
the movie exclusive cards are programmed in. The Showa cards have their henchins, and yes, the old cards will trigger them. The Ultimate Form cards have their henchins as well. If it was in the show or movies, the belt is programmed to play it. The only exception I found were the two Super Sentai cards he used, but maybe no one's found those barcodes as of this video. And it's not just Decades cards that are in here. Dien's common ride cards are here as well, but they produce the same henshin noise. And those aren't the only Dien cards I've heard from this belt. If that's not enough function, all the old Gomboride cards make the same sound combinations they did in the old driver. I showed that earlier with Slash. And if you're like me and have a stack of old printed cards, even those weird ones that did nothing but play names still work. It does everything it did in the show and everything it did as a toy. And then it does more. Yes, Double Through Drive are in the belt as common ride cards, but as of this video haven't been released or announced, which makes me seriously curious what else got snuck into this toy. The Deca Driver continues to be my favorite henchin belt for its sleek, high-tech look, subtle design theme, dynamic action feature, and one of the best voices in a rider belt. The CSM version gives me everything I wanted out of the toy and more. It more than earns the title Complete Selection. That said, I leave it to you to determine if the high cost is worth it. If mine hadn't broken, I might not have been so quick to get such an expensive item. But I would have eventually tracked it down because it does do everything I always wanted the Deca Driver to do. <sighs> I really don't have an end for this. Okay, how about for old time's sake, we hear one of those leftover cards from testing that actually was a card. Come in, Lido. Well, that would have saved some time. <laughs>